In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good afternoon. It is a privilege for me to share with you once again another reflection. Well, it's happening. One by one, states are reopening. Here in Massachusetts, as in most states, this is taking place over the course of four phases. And our governor has said that each phase would last three weeks. Once we transition into phase four, it will be called the new normal. And you may recall during one of my earlier reflections, I had said that the last thing that we Christians should be looking forward to is going back to normal. Now we have a new normal to look forward to. But normal or new normal, it really doesn't matter if we go on about our daily routines and continue to leave God out. Our Bible study is currently studying a book called Rediscovering Jesus, an invitation by Matthew Kelly. It is a wonderful book and I highly recommend that you read it. One of the chapters in this book is entitled The Jesus Question. Life is full of questions. Some are essential and others are trivial. Some of life's questions are passing curiosities that we ponder once and never return to, but others provide the themes of our lives. In many ways, the questions we ask of ourselves, of others, and of society define who we become. And the author makes a great point when he says that there is one question that we all have to answer eventually. He calls it the Jesus question. Some people go looking for it, chasing it with the joyful abandon of a child in a treasure hunt. Others spend their entire lives avoiding the Jesus question. Some people try to tiptoe around the Jesus question. Others, they lack even an ounce of humility and reverence required to sit thoughtfully with it. Sometimes we fill our lives with white noise and busyness to avoid the Jesus question. But when the noise dies down and the busyness subsides, the question is still there. It doesn't go away. Some of us will quote others when answering the Jesus question. But someone else's answers are inadequate. We each need our own answers to the Jesus question. As Mr. Kelly states, the Jesus question is a deeply personal question that requires a deeply personal answer. The question itself is like Jesus. Agree with him or disagree with him. Follow him or reject him. About the only thing you cannot do when it comes to Jesus is to ignore him. He is inescapable and unavoidable. His fingerprints are everywhere. We can try to escape him, but Jesus is the inescapable savior who only wants the best for you and knows what is best for you. The Jesus question will never go away and everyone will eventually have to answer it. So by now you're wondering, what is the Jesus question? Well. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 and 16. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. The Jesus question. Who do you say that Jesus is? Not what others say, not what I say, not what our Sunday school teachers say, not what your friends say, but who do you say that Jesus is? Sooner or later, we each have to proclaim for ourselves who we think he is. Since the beginning of this pandemic, I have asked and will continue to ask you to take advantage of this incredible opportunity to get to know Jesus better. Soon we will return to the new normal. As we prepare for it, I encourage you to carefully
ponder Jesus's question. Who do you say that I am? And with confidence, answer him. May God bless you with wisdom and a hunger to seek him always. Amen.